joining us today. Um, I just wanted, so I'm Stacy Pitts Caldwell, the Center Director for the Illinois Small Business Development Center at the Chicago Land Chamber of Commerce. And we are hosting this today for all small businesses to um, kind of get a better understanding of how to sell online and how to become digital. The pandemic has presented that challenge for a lot of small businesses. And myself, my center, along with all of the other Illinois SBDCs are working really hard to help small businesses. So we're hosting this collaboratively. Um, we're in lead partnership with Shopify, who has agreed to um, give this content to our small businesses, um, a four-part series. It's gonna be every Thursday in March. This is our kickoff. So welcome at 1130, we plan on an hour. Um, and if you have questions, just throw them in the chat. Um, Adrian and myself will be monitoring the chat just to make sure that um, Josh can answer your questions. And then after this is over, you will have access to the recording. You'll just have to, um, we'll send it out in a post webinar email and then each time. So each time you'll get a link from us and then you log in if you have to miss one or you something's going on, your schedule changes, you'll still have access to, the, to this information. Um, so again, welcome everyone. I don't know if I missed anything, but I'm going to introduce Jazz. Jazz is our Shopify content who, or contact who's gonna go through the content with you all. And I'm looking forward to it. Thanks so much, Jazz, I'll give it to you. Awesome, so thank you so much to everyone. Uh, joining us today. Um, we've worked uh, quite closely with Adrian and Stacy to, to kind of set up this session. So uh, hoping to kind of uh, answer some of those questions in, in our four part series. Um, as uh, it was mentioned, we were this introduction is more so uh, for for either newcomers or existing merchants or you know, if you're already on the platform, or maybe you're just you know, a small to medium sized business. Um, and you, you know you, the idea of going online is something that you, you're, you're interested in. So hopefully we can answer some of those questions in, in today's sessions. Uh, but again, we do also have a, another four part series. Uh, where we're kind of gonna go over uh, the different aspects. Uh, I noticed that we kind of received a, a few really great questions um, in, in the initial kind of, uh, um, Q&A sessions that we, we received from Stacy and Adrian and you know some of those questions will be answered here um, and so let's get into it. Um, so what is Shopify? Um, so Shopify we are a cloud-based uh, multi-channel commerce uh, platform uh, essentially designed to help you run your business. Um, Shopify allows you to design and set up your uh, manage your stores across multiple sales channels uh, including the web, uh, mobile, social media, marketplaces, uh, brick and mortar locations, as well as pop-ups. Um, so Shopify is considered a single integrated back office, uh, which means uh, you have the control um, uh, of all aspects from one back end to which we refer to as the, the Shopify admin. Um, as you may know, running a business means staying on top of a lot of those moving parts. Um, and here at Shopify, we make this easy uh, for users by providing one mission control uh, for your, your business. So from your Shopify admin, uh, you can keep an eye on all things uh, and all components of your business, uh, including you know, your staff, uh, processing and shipping orders, uh, managing inventory, running ads, and just ensuring things are running smoothly. Uh, quickly at a glance, uh, uh, Shopify caters to businesses of all sizes, as I mentioned, um, from a quick side project to multi-million dollar corporations. Uh, we say that Shopify is uh, suitable for most businesses, but maybe not for all. Uh, we have over a million merchants uh, in over 175 countries using our platform. Um, consumers have purchased over $202 billion worth of product uh, from Shopify uh, stores and we now have over 5,000 uh, employees. Uh, I started at Shopify about four and a half years ago uh, on the front lines where we were originally around 500 um, support members. Now that number has grown up to 4,000. Um, here's a quick snapshot of some of the brands you'll, you'll find on Shopify. 
Uh, you'll probably recognize uh, a few of those and maybe even shop at some of them. Uh, just a quick glance, we have the likes of Ring, um, uh, you know, the security service. There's Kylie Jenner with her makeup line, um, Kitson, Lacoste, so on and so forth. So quick synopsis uh, of the, the, the Shopify origin story. Um, so Shopify started in 2004 uh, by, by mistake. Our founder, Toby Lutke, and his friends were actually trying to sell snowboards online. Um, they were frustrated with the, the e-commerce options and decided instead to build their own solution. Uh, they realized that uh, what they had built um, could actually help other entrepreneurs. So instead of continuing on with their own uh, snowboard store, uh, they decided to what uh, you know to continue to build what became Shopify today. Shopify's straightforward mission is to make commerce better for everyone. Uh, whether you're a Shopify user, uh, whether you're a buyer, uh, a partner like Chicago Land, or no matter who whoever you are, um, and by this we mean you know from large large corporations to to dreamers, Shopify can typically power it. Um, our goal is to help you succeed, and when you succeed, we'll succeed as well. Uh, the image that you're looking for, uh, looking at right now is actually from the Shopify headquarters office uh, here in Ottawa, Canada, uh, as a constant reminder. So as you enter the building, this is probably one of the first things that you'll see. So now uh, let's get into some of the myths of e-commerce. Um, we live in an era of digitalization and people are slowly getting used to technology. So during the uh, digital era, one of the, the businesses uh, that, that boomed was e-commerce. Um, so in this digital era, people are no longer thrilled by the idea of retail shopping. Um, you know, why waste your time roaming outside when you can shop sitting at home in front of your computer or cell phone uh, with multiple options to choose from? Um, despite you know, hundreds uh, of success stories, if not thousands of online entrepreneurs, uh, there are still many uh, who are still holding back. Uh, they think, you know, the idea of going online is a bad idea, or maybe, it, you know, it believes from uh, the, the belief stems from myths and, and, and things that they can, can kind of, uh, they've heard along the line. So, you know, our point is here to, to kind of help tackle some of those myths and, and figure out, uh, you know, what avenue is going to, you know, be the best one for you. So commonly we hear it takes too long. The reality is anyone can build a, a Shopify store. Uh, you know, a basic Shopify store could easily be built in, uh, in a weekend. Um, using the tools and educational resources uh, like Shopify Compass, which I'll touch on towards the end of our, uh, towards the end of the presentation, um, you know, there's some really great how-to guides that will literally walk you through each step. Uh, another commonly heard myth is that it's too difficult and you don't have enough uh, knowledge or skills. Uh, in fact, Shopify is known for its user-friendly uh, admin and tools, um, and there is no uh, you know, coding or, or anything like that required to build your online store. Uh, we've heard that it's expensive or costs too much. Traditionally, you know, previously having someone build your website could have costed upwards of a couple thousand dollars. Uh, the truth is that here, you know, here at Shopify, at least, uh, there's only a monthly fee, which starts at $29 a month, uh, which will allow you to build your own online store. Uh, there can be upfront costs uh, when you're, you're building a store. Uh, if you're using, for example, a paid theme, uh, which we'll talk about, or maybe you're using an application uh, for, uh, for an additional add-on, there may be some additional fee. But there are free themes and there are free, uh, free apps. Um, available to do the basics. So it really just depends on your budget and what exactly you're looking to do. Um, and then here, we, we often hear that many people just don't have the confidence um, or, or, you know, belief system that they can overcome those barriers. So that's why we're here uh, working with our partners uh, to, to help you overcome those barriers. So just a little bit of, uh, you know, the agenda for today. We'll get into these main topics about going from offline, meaning not having anything online, uh, and then going to, to the online system. Uh, so before you jump onto the platform, um, it's important that you have a good understanding of your company's direction. So this is going to help you immensely along the way as you, you know, the more you know, 
the, the easier it will be uh, to gain traction. So first up, we have brand essentials, uh, which I'll talk about now. So a common term uh, being used currently for, for newcomers uh, onto e-commerce platforms uh, is USP, which stands for unique selling proposition. Um, this is the thing that separates you from your competitors uh, that you do better than anyone else. So maybe it's your customer service. Uh, maybe it's your, your, your product itself. Um, maybe you just do a lot better on the price. But it's important to distill what you do better than anyone else into a single or, or a few sentences to communicate that to your, to your visitors, to your store. Uh, the example that you're, you're looking at right now is from a company called Purpose Jewelry. Um, they create handcrafted uh, jewelry by young women who, are, who have escaped uh, human trafficking. So this example not only says what they do, it also shows the, the social impact uh, the company is having and how they're helping to change things. Uh, your photography is equally as important as the message or the product itself. So, uh, you know, if you take a look at this picture here, you have, uh, you know, you have a lifestyle photo and, and, a, and a product photo from a company called Untuck It. Uh, these are all Shopify users. Uh, but basically the lifestyle photo uh, helps build the, the more of the emotional connection to the product, uh, whereas the product uh, photo essentially is there to validate your purchase decision. Um, this, alongside with their, their minimal logo, provides a great visual branding uh, for the company. And as you can see, it's nothing spectacular, but it's simple and does the job. Um, and now the last thing I quickly wanted to talk about within Brand Essentials is, uh, you know, identifying your target audience. And this is something you want to make sure that you do prior to kind of setting up your online store. Uh, so take a moment and think about which group is most affected by the problem that you're looking to solve. Um, essentially, you want to identify the, the ideal customer and adapt your language, uh, speaking to them in a way that you understand or they would understand and reaching, uh, reaching them through various avenues. Uh, for example, social media uh, or email marketing. Uh, if I ask you who your target audience is and you say everyone or, you know, 18 to 65 or something similar, we really wanna work on that and try to narrow it down as much as possible. Uh, because when it comes to email marketing your, your business or just marketing in general, this is gonna help big time. So coming up with the, the product idea is just the beginning of a long but exciting journey uh, on your online business. So there are several options when it comes to, to acquiring new products. Um, and each option has its pros and cons as well as its unique challenges. Um, so let's talk about sourcing your products. Um, the four main methods of acquiring products uh, when you're on a e-commerce platform like Shopify uh, is one, you can make your product. So this is best for, for someone who's you know, more of a, a do-it-yourselfer or someone that has their unique ideas and that can physically produce those products themselves. Uh, you can manufacture, so find a manufacturer to simply produce uh, the product for you. Uh, you have wholesale. So buying wholesale is usually fairly simple and straightforward as a process itself. Uh, you buy you know, your, your product inventory directly from the manufacturer or from a middleman supplier uh, at a discounted wholesale rate in which you then turn and resell at a higher price. Uh, and drop shipping, obviously something that uh, several uh, of you have probably heard about. It's the concept of drop, uh, you know, selling products you don't actually own or store um, or ship yourself. So the process works by taking orders from your online store and then forwarding them to your drop shipper. They in turn will then ship the product to your customer on your behalf. Um, so typically there will be an app or an add-on required uh, in order to, for this process to typically work. Um, give us one second here. And of course, depending on your product, uh, your, your target market, and you know, uh, the one method may be more suitable than, than others. It just really depends on you and the business that you're, you're trying to provide. Now, if you have an existing business, um, maybe it's hosted on a different platform uh, outside of Shopify, 
um, th there's still different ways that you can get your products into a Shopify store. Uh, the most commonly used method is uh, importing using a CSV file, which is similar to uh, an Excel sheet. It's um, typically you just have to match the formatting itself and, and the, it'll, the Excel sheet will, or the CSV file, sorry, uh, will, will do the transitioning for you. Uh, importing directly from a wholesaler, um, if they have an import, uh, a third party integration uh, or maybe a third party app, that will help facilitate. Uh, it just depends on how the supplier provides that data. Um, most suppliers, you can actually nowadays, you know, contact them and ask you to send a CSV file. And of course, uh, the last option would be to manually input your products one by one. Hey, Jazz. Yep. Quick question. So um, we've got we've got Martin who just wanted to know really quickly since you were showing example of themes. Um, is there an example of a theme, or do we does Shopify have a theme for service based businesses to really help the services pop, or is it more product based? Uh, we both. So um, if you visit our theme store, um, you'll be able to narrow down uh, the themes based on the type of business that you are. Um, I'll, I'll share that towards the end of the uh, end of the presentation. I'll have like a full resource deck uh, for everyone to take a look at, where you're gonna kind of be able to take a look at some of the apps as well as the themes and, and whatnot. But service and product, it all depends on your business. Um, there are certain ones that are a little bit more suitable uh, to others than than you know a, a general theme or maybe a general app. It just really depends on uh, the business itself. So when it comes to product photos, uh, there are some common themes that you should follow. Uh, you want high quality and clear images. Uh, many times, uh, you know, working on the front lines, you'll, you'll typically see um, a lot of stores using stock photos uh, from the manufacturers themselves, which typically aren't the best quality and come in different dimensions and, and, and shapes and sizes. So you really wanna create consistency across your store um, and take high quality and clear images. Um, you should be showcasing and highlighting the unique details. And I'll show you a, a few ways uh, for you to do that. Um, some things to keep in mind is to show a variety of angles, but also have a, a neutral background like white or gray um, to make the product stand out. Uh, keep in mind here that your customers aren't going to be in your physical stores. Uh, this is extremely important. So, you know, it's important that you include clear, high quality images. So, you know, what they're basing their decision to purchase off of is those images themselves. So have some fun with it, but make sure, you know, you're, you're showing all aspects of the product. Uh, and here we have an, uh, an example, uh, MVMT. Uh, you'll notice that the quality of the image, um, how the additional photos show details, like how it looks like on the wrist, uh, the buckle in the back and, and side profile. So just to kind of give you an idea of what kind of imagery you can be using. Uh, so next up, equally important as product photos uh, is copywriting. So this is the act of strategically writing text that persuades people to take some form of action on your site. Uh, the focus of this is predominantly on product descriptions. Um, although copywriting also includes, you know, your product titles, uh, email promotions, basically anything customer facing. So anything that your customers would be able to see. Um, a well-written copywriting is essential because it drives profitability. Uh, it earns um, a return on investment and achieves your business's goals by convincing your target customer that your product offerings will solve their need and offer them value. So think of this again as similar to a salesperson who's on the floor. Um, the example uh, that you're looking at right now is a, from a company called Gymshark, um, who is a Shopify user as well, uh, that sells athletic wear based out of the United Kingdom. Uh, their dis product description for each individual product contains keywords and phrases used by customers to find um, this particular product or any particular product uh, in search engines like Google or Bing. So, you know, examples would be, for example, to, to include something like slim fit, uh, lightweight material, 
uh, and they list off the type of materials they use on each individual product. So just something to think about when it comes to If I move that crap out the way, it can. <laughs> Uh, again, so the takeaways for your product descriptions um, is, you know, you, you want to find features and benefits to encourage your, 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 your customers to pr purchase your products. Um, so think about are, the, are your descriptions creative? Um, does the description ensure trust that your customers are buying what they need and, and the value attached to it? Uh, so make sure that they're creative and unique. Use keywords. Um, and then, you know, make sure that you can relate trust and communicate trust and the value of your product uh, using, you know, the product imagery uh, and, and as well as some of the descriptions. Hey, Jazz, I got a couple of questions in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, so Evelyn and, and, and um, Yolanda both are asking about the C SV file that you mentioned. Sure. Um, so can you give a little more, more context around that? You know, is it used to add specific information? Is there an easy way to format it? Those are, those are the two questions that we have here in the chat. Totally. So with CSV files, um, we do have a formatted, pre-formatted uh, draft CSV file, uh, which I can link to you in the chat at the end of the presentation. So uh, yes, there is a specific formatting that is required. Um, and we do provide uh, a sample CSV file which kind of has that formatted so it makes it a lot easier. So literally, if you have the, the CSV file, you can simply just, you know, click and drag your, your you know, copy and paste um, those individual sections into the CSV file uh, itself. And then when you upload it into your Shopify admin, um, it will, will, will do so on its own. Okay, and then there was one more question. I know Adrian hopped in and, and answered this as well, but just for you to speak to it, because um, Shop Shopify does offer a POS system. Is that correct? For that is correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. So we we do have our own point of sale system. Um, the point of sale system will it's 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 an app currently uh, that can be installed onto an iPad or an iPhone uh, that integrates directly within your Shopify admin. So getting back to kind of creating trust within your, your brand uh, through product descriptions, um, it's a commonly used tactic. Uh, that's a really great way to build that trust. So uh, an, an example uh, that comes to mind um, is, is this company here called Cotton. Uh, so what they do is they create a virtual dressing room um, where they use you know, models and staff to, to model their clothing. Uh, of all different shapes and sizes to try on the clothing and give them a more realistic uh, idea of how the clothing fits. Um, they're a really great example of this because on each product page, um, they, uh, they've included a sizing guide uh, and, dis and literally beside each description, um, beside each model, they've included the height, what they regularly wear, for example, for clothing, and the exact size that they're wearing in the picture. So depending on the product, you might sometimes see someone that normally wears a large hoodie, but in the image itself, they're using they're wearing a medium hoodie because it's meant to be oversized. So the, the, the sense of trust is something you want to build and showcase on each product page. So think about that as you uh, are, are going through the descriptions themselves. So next up, we want to discuss the design of your online store. So while there are you know, tons of things we can cover, we're gonna cover, um, you know, we're gonna focus on these three key elements, uh, selecting the, the right theme, which I kind of touched on that question earlier. So that's gonna be the template of what your site will look like. Um, some, design, um, some design aspects of, of what to include on your website. And then we'll get into the more homepage of, of ideas and, and, and things that you would typically wanna see. So I really enjoy this part of the process because it now allows you to show off more of your creative side. So based on the type of business, uh, as I mentioned is, uh, earlier, you can visit our Shopify theme store and select uh, theme templates uh, that's best suitable for your business. So themes are pre-built with a variety of layouts and features. Um, you have over a hundred themes in our theme store to select from. Uh, this includes both free and paid themes. Uh, so one important thing to note here is free themes are developed by Shopify. 
So what I mean by that is Shopify employees, uh, our development team have developed those, those themes themselves. So they are supported by Shopify. Um, we also have third party themes, which are all paid themes um, who are developed by uh, third party developers that are a part of the Shopify partner program. So they're typically on our apps program. Um, so they go through a, 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 a series of requirements and, and vetting process in order to be a, a, a theme or an app uh, on our theme store or our app store. So um, those are typically, um, you know, supported by the developers themselves, uh, but you can find both of those um, within our theme store as well as our app store. Um, typically no coding, you know, for the most part, no coding is required, uh, but you do have full access to the theme files. Uh, for example, if you want to make a specific customization, um, so you, you do have that additional avail availability. Um, visit themes.shopify.com and you can see some of those themes for yourselves and see, you know, pick and choose through the demos what, you know, you think your, your business would most relate to. So now once you've selected your theme you're going to be using, it's important to start thinking about uh, creating and maintaining uh, brand trust. Uh, the mobile experience, as well as the navigation. So although there, there's several things to think about when it comes to this, uh, I wanted to touch on uh, the three main principles, your design, uh, you know, to, to include the brand test again, have a strong visual, ex uh, visual appeal. Uh, you really want to focus on a great mobile experience um, and easy navigation for people to find their way around your website. So imagine visiting um, your online store for the first time uh, or any online store. What would encourage you to make that purchase and what elements would reduce your trust in the business? Um, you know, especially with so many stores online, um, fraud typically is something that you, you, you think about before buying uh, anything online. So, you know, what would prevent a customer from turning away from um, your, 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 your business or your website? Um, this entire process uh, requires trust and typically it's subconscious trust. Uh, so we've talked about product images, again, solid trust, uh, trust building uh, aspect of your business, copywriting, you have product descriptions. Um, but I wanted to talk about some additional methods uh, online stores will, will typically use uh, to build their trust. So uh, making your contact information easily accessible. Uh, this reminds potential customers there is a person behind a brand and helps generate that confidence. Uh, post your return policy. Uh, this actually does increase purchases by instilling a sense of confidence and trust in, your, in the customer, uh, knowing that they can return the product if they need to. A recent study that we, we did found that 66% of potential customers will review this before they check out. Um, offer your target audiences, audiences commonly preferred payment methods. Um, that might include Apple Pay, Google Pay, or PayPal, depending on the type of payment gateway that you choose. Uh, again, customer trust is hardest to earn when you don't have any customers. So these trust elements are critical uh, when designing your, your online store to help you gain that additional traction. And then we have our mobile experience. So currently over 67% of purchases are happening on mobile devices. So if you've been ignoring your site's mobile experience, it can actually have a huge impact on your business. Um, people these days expect to be easily, to be able to easily browse and purchase uh, through mobile phones. That's just a matter of fact, in 2021, majority of these purchases are gonna be through uh, mobile devices. So let's focus on, you know, choosing a theme, uh, the right theme. So it's a good idea to test the transaction flow uh, on both desktop and also mobile to make sure that you're happy with it. The chances are if you're not happy with the flow or if it's confusing you, uh, you know, your customers are typically gonna be in the same boat. Um, and when you're working with on your theme, uh, make sure to test those individual mobile views out to make sure that the changes or updates are working well on your website. So for example, you might add a, uh, a, a slideshow on your, on your theme. It might look great on your actual uh, desktop version, but now let's take a look at the mobile version to make sure that that also translates well. 
Uh, your website navigation should help your, your customers find your products easily. Uh, a good navigation design uh, improves your, your store shopping experience. Um, and, all, uh, and in return, that helps increase sales and profits. Uh, navigation can influence your, your theme choice uh, as well. If you have a large catalog of products, uh, a theme with a larger menu display may be best for you. Um, so try using three to four headers uh, to start off with on your main menu as sites with too many navigation options can make it feel a little bit cluttered or a little bit overwhelming. Um, and that increases the likeliness that visitors will drop off or essentially just not visit your website again. So be as clear as possible when labeling those headers. Um, and if you're getting started off uh, or if you're just getting started off, think about you know a home, uh, a home button that takes you back to the home page. Um, you know, if you're a clothing brand, maybe narrow it down by um, hoodies, t-shirts, or you know, tank tops, or whatever you want to kind of narrow it down by. So, kind of start thinking about what kind of categories uh, you would typically display on your website. Uh, and then this again translates to your homepage. Your homepage for your website. Is, is similar to like a newspaper or the entrance of a physical store. So think about your clear goals of your homepage. Uh, what do you want people to do? Uh, do you want them to jump straight into shopping? Or maybe do you want them to sign up for uh, your, your newsletter and earn you know, a discount? Um, it, it really just depends on what you want to showcase first. Uh, you wanna have clear navigation, clear calls to action, and provide easy access to the shopping cart, uh, as well as contact details. Uh, so remember when, when search engines like Google um, are you know, trying to get you online, I know a lot of the questions were about driving traffic to your website. All of these things do come in hand to hand. Uh, our next session is a little bit more focused on the marketing and driving traffic. So we'll, we'll, we'll save that for then. Um, your homepage should be geared towards getting people to take action and move further down the, you know, the shopping funnel. So find a, for example, a, uh, you know, Black Friday, Cyber Monday passed not too long ago. Um, a lot of stores were showcasing, you know, their sales section right at the first, uh, you know, right as you enter the website, that was the first thing that you saw. Um, Christmas rolled around or the holiday season rolled around, you know, holiday sales. Uh, typically in January to March, you'll, you'll see new, new products show up. So what most stores will do is showcase those, uh, those new products at the front of the page. Um, so as you kind of scroll down, that's the very first thing you, you come across. And in, in return, that does, does entice customers to, to purchase. Uh, and pages. Pages are a great opportunity to for you to tell your story. Um, and add in your personal touches. At here, you can let your customers know who you are and what you're about and even how to contact you. Um, it really does help increase the, the customer trust and establish you as a brand. So common pages that you should look at or uh, at adding if you are a newcomer is an about us page. So tell your story, uh, a terms of service and privacy, policy, uh, uh, privacy page, uh, a contact us page, uh, and maybe even a return policy page. Here in Ottawa, we're still kind of under this uh, lockdown phase. Um, so a lot of merchants are using uh, the local pickup options or local pickup instructions um, and adding that to your, to your website as well. So for example, I purchased something online and I've selected the local pickup option. Um, now I have to go to your website and it tells me the exact instructions of where to go, what to bring, uh, so that I can complete the transaction. Hey, Jazz, can we expand on that? One of the questions in the chat was actually just about that. It, um, I think this is Allison. Allison says her store originally offered express pay options, um, but had to turn that off because it, it seemed that it was automatically choosing their shipping option and didn't allow the customer to choose curbside pickup. Is yeah. there some sort of link or instruction you can, you can. Um, yeah. So recommend. one of, the, um, so if you are Allison on the Shopify platform, um, there are certain requirements uh, in order to uh, provide that local pickup um, or local delivery option. Um, I believe accelerated payment methods is currently not, it, it, it doesn't allow you to um, 
uh, offer those types of pickups, but there are other ways around that. Um, so if you talk to our support advisors, I know they'd be able to help you out with either setting up a different shipping option uh, so that you can offer um, local pickup, even if they use uh, an accelerated uh, shipping method like, or, or accelerated payment method uh, like Shop Pay or Google Pay or anything like that. Perfect. So now that you've got your products, you've designed your store, uh, we need to create contact, uh, content, sorry. Um, so you, you want to make sure that you're telling your brand story, um, which I mentioned briefly before, uh, creating a sense of community and always thinking about marketing. Um, when, you're, when you're telling your story, uh, you want to focus on your, your, your brand essentials. So identify your core principles. Uh, that's going to be, you know, your purpose, your vision, your mission, and, and your values so that you understand what your brand is really trying to achieve and then convey that. Um, you want to uh, you want to create an authentic connection with your target audience and give them some unique and refreshing content that helps provide uh, value to them. So a lot of times, what we'll see is uh, blog posts. Blogs are an easy way to kind of create that and maintain um, that connection with your your target audience. Um, and then what we can do is then engage in your community. So. Another great way to create connections is, by, is doing so within your community itself. Uh, think about the communities that you're in and, and ones that you can, uh, you can join either online um, or in real life when you're allowed to do so in, in your respective cities. So think about how you can contribute uh, more to your community, becoming connected, and, and then in return builds trust and creates tons of engagement and loyalty for your brand. Um, so now let's get into the kind of the, the four types of marketing initiatives that can drive traffic um, and, and engagement within your website. Um, so we'll kind of go over these a little bit more detailed um, in our next session, but I wanted to quickly briefly, you know, touch up on them. So we have organic marketing. Um, th so that's going to be things like your, your blogs and your, your social media. Uh, you have paid marketing. So think about, you know, radi radio, TV. Um, or, or anything, you know, that sponsored posts um, that would fall under the, the kind of the, the paid marketing aspect. Uh, email marketing, um, although some folks consider email marketing to be a little bit outdated and a waste of time, uh, a recent study showed that a solid email marketing campaign can be 40 times more effective than a social media campaign. So most of the merchants I speak with uh, who have spent a lot, uh, you know, a lot of time with email marketing typically say that getting their, their best rate of return is from these types of email marketing campaigns. Uh, and then we have SEO marketing, which is ramping up your keywords uh, and metadata uh, so that you can get a better ranking uh, when you search for you know, your, your store or your particular products uh, in those search engines. Uh, this does take time. It's not something that's you know, gonna happen overnight, but it's well worth the effort for, for long-term. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, most businesses are looking to get paid. And, and if you're going to be selling online, you need a, a way, uh, you, you need a way to process your payments, which is in a secure manner. Uh, a payment method is essentially the link between the business and the customer that securely takes the money um, from the customer's account and, and sends it to the, the business's bank account. So how you choose your payment gateway depends on a number of things. Um, the, the types of products that you sell is one. So gateways may have restrictions on the, the specific types of products that you sell or, or potentially the services that can be sold with them. Uh, you wanna look at the fees that are charged. Most gateways charge per transaction, uh, but there may be additional fees on top of the, the processing fees. So definitely take uh, a look into that and do some research. Uh, another important thing to think about is, will this integrate with my platform? Ideally, you want a payment uh, gateway that's integrated within your online platform. Um, so if you choose one that doesn't, typically it'll redirect your, your customer to an additional or another web page to pay. Um, and that's not really ideal for a customer experience as it does reduce trust. But there are you know, third-party payment gateways that are supported on the Shopify platform, for example, um, that do provide that service. Um, here at Shopify, we have our own payment gateway, 
which is called Shopify Payments. Um, it's fully integrated with the platform um, and it allows you to accept um, not only Visa, MasterCard and American Express, but you can also uh, enable those Express checkouts that I mentioned before, with like Google Pay, uh, Apple Pay and Shop Pay. Um, so, you know, take a look into that, see if you meet the requirements for Shopify payments uh, as it is an integrated payment method. Um, so with uh, Shopify, you also have the ability to provide both a primary and a secondary payment gateway. Um, so you could be running Shopify payments for your credit cards and debit, uh, debit cards, uh, but also, you know, accept PayPal, or if you're lucky enough to get into Bitcoin, maybe you might have a little bit of Bitcoin laying around, you can set up a, a Bitcoin payment processor as well. Uh, so second, uh, secondary gateways offer a little bit of flexibility and familiarity uh, to your customers and giving your customers an option to, to pay uh, how they want to pay. And this essentially helps increase uh, the chances of a conversion. Uh, so now we have the shipping and fulfillment, which is essentially key to getting your, you know, your, your products to your customers themselves. Um, You've probably been in a situation like this before where you find a product you want online. Um, you think it's a fair price, but when you get to the checkout page, the total cost has suddenly skyrocketed uh, because of the shipping and handling. So unexpected shipping co costs are the top reason for cart abandonment. So 56% actually uh, of a cart aban uh, abandoned carts are due to shipping costs being higher than what the customer expected. So there's a few strategies uh, that you can use to try battling uh, this issue. So free shipping. So that's increased product pricing uh, to include shipping costs. So offer free shipping uh, across the board. While this may not be possible for some, it's something that definitely can be considered. Uh, the second option is free shipping over X. Um, this is essentially there to incentivize customers while also providing you the benefit of helping you increase your average order value. Um, the trick is to get some sales under your belt first um, and determine whether the over, uh, wh what your order, average order value is. Uh, based on that, then you can offer free shipping on orders that are higher than the average order value. Um, carrier calculated shipping, um, or sometimes called real-time rates, um, this, is mean, this essentially means that your checkout will be connected uh, with your shipping carrier and provide pricing based on the, the cart weight, uh, package size, and shipping destination uh, directly from the carrier themselves. Uh, it's typically the most accurate for shipping costs. Uh, and then we have flat rate shipping. So this option is based on weight ranges um, or order total. So for example, you can say anything between $10 and $20 will cost X amount. And then we get into packaging, uh, which is definitely an important part of the shipping and fulfillment process. Uh, not only does it protect your, your products from possible damage, but it's also the first thing the customer sees uh, when, when their order arrives to their doorstep. And at first, that first impression is a big deal. Uh, one strategy that I love and I wanted to mention was promotional collateral uh, or package inserts. Uh, which can be easily, it's an easy way to build a, a solid relationship with your customer. Um, so if you take a look at the, the example on the screen uh, from ColourPop, they always include a handwritten note um, in, some, in, in all of their packages. It's a great way to make a customer feel good about their purchase. Um, some other examples could be, for example, samples um, or small gifts or potentially even a discount code that you can use towards uh, future purposes, purchases, sorry. And lastly, within the shipping and, and fulfillment, I wanted to talk about the, the Shopify fulfillment network. Um, essentially, uh, it's a new product that we, we have, a uh, new option. Uh, it allows you to deliver your orders to your customers. So you can store your inventory close to the customers uh, in fulfillment centers across the United States and Canada uh, for fast and affordable shipping. Uh, it allows you to manage your, your business data, including the, the shipment tracking, uh, customer data and inventory levels all in one place. So if you go to shopify.com slash fulfillment, uh, you'll be able to learn a little bit more and figure out whether or not you meet those eligibility requirements. Hey, Jess, I want to give a, a time check really yep. quick. 
Um, so we're about at 1218. I want to, there's a couple of questions in the chat. So just wanted you to know. So Perfect. when you wrap up, well, I'll ask you the, the sounds the good. Questions. Yeah. So just a couple more left. Okay. Perfect. And so again, lastly, uh, we have Shopify capital. Um, so if you live in the United States or Canada and need additional funds to develop your business, uh, then you might be eligible for funding from Shopify capital, uh, through a cash advance or a loan. So there are certain uh, eligibility requirements um, that have to be met, uh, but basically it's an automated process based on you know, how long you've been on the platform, the number of sales, you may or may not be eligible uh, for a Shopify capital funding. And what I wanted to sh lastly showcase was some of the resources. Um, our help center is going to be your best friend if you're just getting started off. Uh, a lot of how to's uh, and, and guides can be found there. Our app store, um, where you can find additional add-ons. Um, so for example, if the theme itself doesn't have the feature that you're looking for, potentially an app is there to, to add that on for you. Uh, as I mentioned, the theme store, uh, the theme store uh, take a look at the, the themes. Uh, Shopify Compass is probably one of the, the best tools that we have out there right now. Uh, a lot of our how-to guides, for example, using a CSV file, um, adding products, SEO related questions are all answered in there. Um, and then if you're just kind of looking to, to kind of get started off um, or just wanted to you know, get some ideas going, we also have our Shopify podcast uh, podcasts um, where, where there, there's some really great conversations, especially now with, you know, uh, with COVID and stuff figuring out ways around it and how to kind of re, re, re kind of figure out, configure your, your business model uh, to, to kind of fit your city's requirements and needs. So uh, on that note, that is all I have. So let's get into the actual questions uh, and we can go from there. Well, I have two from the chat that I'll start with. Um, the one is from Monica, I believe. Um, Monica had a question directly, specifically about her Weebly site. She has a Weebly powered website and she's wondering if Shopify can be integrated into that website. Um, so in, in just to kind of uh, get a little bit of additional kind of context. So integration in what sense? Is it more of a, is it a currently a blog post or a blog page? Monica, are you still on? Feel free to unmute yourself and elaborate on your question if you're still on here. Let's see if she's still here. Uh, she might not be here. Okay. So, so there are certain, like, for example, uh, we, we have a lot of people that are um, on, for example, WordPress, uh, where there isn't an add to cart function. Um, and instead of having to build a, an entire website on Shopify, they want to maybe add that add to cart function directly on their, their existing WordPress website. Um, so what you can typically do in, in that sense is, um, we have a, a sales channel, which we refer to as the buy button, the buy button, what it allows you to do is, for example, if you're selling product a, uh, what it'll do is in Shopify, you'll enter in, you know, the title, the description, your product price, uh, the weight, basically all the, the information regarding the product and through the buy button channel, what you can do is then create an embed code, which you can then integrate into your third party website. So I, I, I'm not sure if that was what she was referring to, but um, just a little bit more context on that would be great. Yeah, I can show that uh, last slide, I think for for the resources. Okay. Um, Monica, if you want to unmute yourself, you can just expand on your your con your the context of your question. Oh, she said we she thinks we answered it. Okay. Okay, perfect. Great, perfect. Um, the other question, Jazz, was from um, I believe it was it was Martin. He just wanted a little bit of, uh, more context around the the apps and the opportunities that Shopify has to help the businesses with their marketing, their SEO campaigns, and things of that nature. For sure. So there there's definitely certain tools within the Shopify platform itself um, that, that are specifically targeting uh, SEO related items. There's definitely apps and, and, and whatnot, but what I would suggest doing is actually, if you have a Shopify store already, Martin, um, definitely get in touch with our support advisors. If there's something specific, um, 
you know, with your SEO that you're struggling with, or maybe you wanted to, to find a little bit more information on, they definitely be able to take a look at maybe your analytics and see, okay, based on this type of marketing that you're doing, where do you need to kind of push a little bit further into? Um, it, it's it's it, always with SEO, it's always a case by case situation because, you know, store X might be, you know, might have a lot of metadata. Uh, store B might not have any product descriptions or not good enough product descriptions. So it's always a case by case scenario, but our support, our support team um, is there 24 uh, seven for any kind of questions uh, regarding your store. So definitely leverage those uh, our, our support advisors. They can definitely help with that. And Tanya thinks she has a silly question, which is not Tanya. It's not a silly question, but um, she's asking, she's trying to get an understanding of what's the difference between Shopify and like an Etsy store. Sure. I'll let you share that. Josh. Yeah, for sure. So I, I've, I've actually never used Etsy in my life, so I might not be able to answer that for you. Um, but Shopify is kind of an e-commerce platform. So uh, whether you want to sell on an online website, uh, maybe you want to integrate uh, Facebook and Instagram to also sell uh, your products. Um, Shopify has those options for you. Uh, I know in the questions earlier, you asked about point of sale. Uh, we have our own point of sale system that integrates directly with your online store and the rest of the, uh, the sales channel. So we call, call that a, an omni-channel experience. So for example, um, if you run a, a retail store and product you know, X is purchased online, that should automatically um, updates within your point of sale system as well as the other channels so that, you know, uh, that product isn't oversold. So uh, I don't know if Etsy has those options. They might. I'm just not too familiar with uh, the type of product that they are. Yeah, we've got a couple more. I want to make sure we get to them. So Kevin says, when U.S. supplier sells the product to Canada from the U.S. by UPS, so that's the shipping, does Shopify support some export documentation process for that transaction? Uh, when it comes to shipping, no, um, the, you know, Shopify doesn't handle the actual shipping component of that. Um, if you, for example, use a fulfillment network, um, depending on where the product is located, typically, you know, if you have a, a fulfillment network or, you know, you, you, let's just say your products are, are being housed in a warehouse in Canada, typically those, you know, will, will only be sent to Canadian customers, whereas, you know, the, the ones in the States will typically target the States. Uh, but when it comes to actual, uh, d you know, documentation uh, for transactions and whatnot, tip Shopify typically won't provide that to your to your shipping services. That's something that you would do uh, with them directly. Okay. And then Sharon says, do does Shopify have a relationship with Vend? I'm, I'm I, not familiar with Vend. So I'm, I'm not familiar with Vend either. Okay. Uh, there's honestly so many platforms out there right now. Um, <laughs> Vend... I'm not exactly sure, Sharon, if you have like kind of a, an idea of what they do or what they are, I can definitely look into that for you. Okay. And then um, a couple, another question. I know we've got some businesses that are service businesses on here. Do you have an example? Maybe if you can't share it now, you can send us a link and we can share it in the post email of a theme that is service-based. Yeah. So um, if you take a look at the actual theme store, I don't know if there was um, let me see if I can find one. Uh, but if anything, what I can do, uh, Stacey and Adrian, is I can look into that um, yep. and always share that towards uh, towards the end. Okay, perfect. And then um, there's a there's a question about how the POS does the POS pull actually pull items out of inventory that is in asking. Yes. So great question, and so the inventory automatically updates. So if whether it's sold from your point of sale system um, or if the product is sold through your online store, it will automatically update the inventory to, to match accordingly. You can have different inventories. So um, as you kind of grow as a business, you might have several locations. You can do location-based inventory. So store, you know, um, if you have ABC, location ABC, you can have X amount on each, at each location uh, so that the according uh, inventories are always up to date. All right. I think, uh, let's see. I think that's really it for, for the questions. Um, what I would also say, 
a, a question we got ahead of time was, you know, small business owners, we don't always know how to design sites. I know they're themes, but there's some customization that needs to happen. Um, do you suggest that they, is there a freelance designers or people that can design a Shopify store for them? And if, if so, is that something that you suggest is a good idea for small business owners? What, if, what are your thoughts? Absolutely. That's a awesome question. Uh, by the way, I just posted uh, kind of like a, an industry, like a food and drink type of uh, theme. I, I'll definitely dig a little bit deeper into the, the different uh, themes there. But yes, when it comes to development, typically, you know, if you're, you're not comfortable with making uh, your own website or giving it a stab yourself, uh, we do offer uh, like I mentioned, our support advisors are there for you if you wanted kind of like more of a hand-holding experience. Um, our Shopify Compass um, is a fantastic tool because it is a lot of how-to videos um, and walks you exactly through how to do all that stuff uh, from, from start to finish. Now, if you need a little bit more than that, we have experts uh, which are part of the Shopify Experts program. It's, uh, I just linked their, their website uh, in the chat there. It's experts.shopify.com. They're third-party developers um, that you're able to hire. Um, prices ranged based on the type of work that's required. Um, they can be hired for, for example, uh, a complete store setup. Uh, maybe you just want them to create one page for you um, or make a specific customization. Um, Depending on what exactly you're looking to do, um, experts are definitely a good tool that can be leveraged. Um, and again, fees will vary depending on, um, you know, what type of work you're looking to get done. All right. Thanks, Jazz. We're right at 1230. Perfect. Um, so I want to go ahead and wrap this one up. I do want to share that the next one is next Thursday. It's driving traffic. So that, that'll get a little bit more into that. Also, you guys know, if you look at the three dots on the chat there, you can save the chat if you were um, interested in that. However, most of the questions, I got them, and I'll go ahead and provide the links and send that in the post email for this one. You will receive another email from Adrian or myself on the link for the next one. And I hope this was enjoyable. Please send us any information that you or feedback that you want to share to make it better. And thank you for attending. Awesome. Thank you All guys. Right. All yeah, the best. I'm gonna save this chat, the chat too. Let me save it before we get out of here. <laughs> okay.